Hey everyone, welcome to a bonus episode of Nicole's Needlework. Uh, today is Saturday and it is January 6th. It's right around 9.30 a.m. I was actually supposed to be on the road right now to Columbia to meet up with Karen. Um, the Needler in Lexington is going out of business, so they're having a 40% off sale. Um, but um, Wednesday, we got a ton of snow and it still hasn't melted. It, the temperatures, it's been so cold for South Carolina, it's just unheard of for the snow not to melt like the next day or even less than a day. Um, it's just been crazy. I was off work, um, well I was off work Monday because it was New Year's Day and then Tuesday I took a holiday but then I've had off work Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because of the snow and mainly because of the ice. We're just not prepared um, here in South Carolina to handle ice on the roads. So anyway, it's just been, it's been crazy. And I was starting to get a little cabin fever. So I was like, oh, that'll be good. Go out and see Karen, um, you know, find a few things on sale and maybe have lunch. And I started, I went down one road, there was an accident, uh, the road was blocked. So I turned around, went down another road, and it was just ice. It was, it was, I didn't want to deal with uh, driving through that. So I turned around and came home. I went to the, the grocery store was open. So I went to the grocery store, got some food for the kids, and decided to be a good mom and feed the kids, you know. <laughs> Miss out on the cross-stitch sale. Anyway, um, so sorry I missed you Karen, it would have been so much fun, but we'll have to plan it again. Um, maybe go up to Rock Hill to a Stitch and Frame Shop, even though it won't be on sale. Oh well, what can you do? So anyway, um, in this bonus episode, uh, since I've had so much time, and I should have been using that time stitching, but I've been mainly like playing. I've been going through all my stash and um, seeing what I want to stitch. Of course, Ginger is acting up. I don't know what she's doing. But I I have a lot of old issues of sampler and antique needlework quarterly. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through and show you what I thought were some neat uh, samplers. Um, if you could care less about this, just fast forward or, you know, don't watch. Um, but they're not in any order. I was just going through, flipping through, and I really should get the DVD. I think it's like 45 bucks on 123 Stitch, and you get every issue, which is such a good deal. So I think I might do that. Um, maybe I'll put these uh, actual issues on Stash Unload. Um, and thank you to everyone who um, bought my charts I put on Stash Unload recently. Um, which enabled me to buy more, uh, but more on that later. <laughs> okay, so this one is a uh, summer 2010 issue, and the sampler I really like in this one is Elizabeth, bleh, can't speak, 1854 Isabella Johnstone sampler. I just love it. I love the cow, I love the red. I love everything about the sampler. And this is um, reproduced by Needlework Press. Um, Vicki Jennett. So look at that one. So this um, article is all about cows and samplers. So it's pretty neat. Pretty neat to read about it. And then there's Jane Tyndall, which I had at one time. And I actually still have all the threads for, so I'm kind of put that, it's kind of back on my radar again. I'll do that. I'll sell things, and then I'll be like, why did I sell that? <laughs> so, uh, a lot of neat samplers in here. So, that one caught my eye. And, let me see. What supplies? So, calls for Belsois, um, and 28 count pearl barley, so they're doing two over two. I'd probably do a 40 count and do one over two. 
four. Yeah, because... Oh, it looks like they... Uh, looks like they do blending of threads here. So, I don't know. It might be kind of fun to do it on 28 count, 2 over 2. But it would use a lot of thread. That's one thing I like. I kind of like the the bigger counts. Um, I just don't like how much thread I use when I use the bigger counts. Um, I don't know why. Okay, this one I marked quite a few. And this one is fall 2008. Like I said, they're in no order. Look at that bird. The first thing I marked was this sweet little sampler. And it is 1879 Sabina Moore sampler. Um, and this is done two over two with cotton old willow stitchery threads. I used to have some of those, but I don't anymore. But I can substitute something else. But this sampler kind of reminded me of the new GGR Martha Scott, a Scott sampler. And now Oreo. So I think that would be a cute companion to that. So that caught my eye. And that's Sabina Moore. And then they had um, kind of a neat article about Charleston samplers. And this is a Charleston, I don't think I'd ever do that one. It's kind of boring. I'd probably lose my mind. But neat article about uh, Charleston samplers. And, um, the Charleston Museum has samplers. My uh, Tanya, the Scarlet House, she actually met with, up with the curator to view them, which I would love to do one day. And then this one was pretty, this Dutch band sampler. I thought that was really pretty. And that uses Gloriana. So. Anyway, there's just these magazines. I just love them. I'm so sad that they stopped uh, printing them. So that was fall 2008. All right, and this one is fall 2009. Well, that's a pretty sampler, but not really my style. This one I marked, and this is the Anna Thies, I believe, um, and it was reproduced by Perman of Copenhagen. And this uses DMC uh, 2 over 2 on 32 count sandstone linen. So I think that would be fun to do 2 over 2. Love that. I love the cat with the ball of yarn. It's really pretty. So, and that was again fall 2009. I think you can get this pattern on its own. Um, this one, volume 15. Um, don't even see. The year, anything. I'm sure it's in here. But the cover sampler caught my eye. That one is really pretty. Um, it is Margaret Margaret Gel 1810 sampler, and they use um, wool threads on 25 count linen, but. I think it would be pretty to use just DMC or silk threads on maybe a 32 count. Some neat um, pattern darning in there. Um, some specialty stitches, so that looks like a fun one. I also had some Mary Cox stuff in here. Her stuff is so neat. So pretty. 
a lot of it's over one. Um, oh, and then they had these pinballs, which are kind of a lot of neat articles. And that was volume 15 again, Margaret Gel. All right, volume nine, going way back. The sampler really caught my eye. It's Hannah Harrison sampler. And it looks like a Quaker. I don't know if it is a Quaker though. But it kind of has that look. I just love the simplicity of it. It's just really pretty. And that is That's just Antique Blue, 3750. Or you can use Swa Dalje. Looks like they did it. They did two, two over two. And 36 count. It's really pretty, I love that. Hannah Harrison. And volume nine. Um, Oh, this one, this is volume 22, and I marked it because of the Judith Hale samplers. Um, they said, let's see, I think it said there's 15 samplers associated with her. It's really neat. So neat article about them. I have one that I got on eBay a while ago. They're so pretty. I just, I really like them. The one I have kind of looks like that. So, neat article. Um, volume 16, and I marked the cover sampler. Love that so pretty. I love the colors. Um, and this is Margaret Hoyland 1744. I have some neat articles in there. And this chart uh, is a giant book. Um, they use Swa Dalje and 40 count linen. So that would be a neat one to do. Margaret Hoyland. I just love looking at the articles too. Anything with the red house, I'm immediately drawn to. So. All right, are you bored yet? <laughs> what we do when we can't leave the house. <laughs> um, this is a newer one, volume 46, uh, spring 2007. And I like this, the cover sampler. I think that's really pretty. And um, it's done. It's done using anchor threads on 28 count coffee bean linen, two over two. So I think it might be kind of fun to do some of these samplers on larger counts. Oh, I marked something else. In here. Oh, and then there's an article about Quakers. There's Mary Wiggum, which I have started and stopped and started and stopped. Maybe one day I'll start it again. So, kind of a neat article on Quakers, and they give this Quaker design frame, which I do not like. Um, speaking of Quakers, oh, I've had this book for quite a while. It is a really good book about um, Quaker samplers. I don't know if it can be found anymore. Maybe 
on eBay or Amazon, but it's probably not cheap. Um, I've had it for quite a while, but it's, it's a really good book. And it was put out by Needleprint, and the jacket actually has a Quaker sampler in it, Mary Thompson. This is the pattern, but I think that's cool. So Quaker School Girl Samplers from Ackworth is the title of it. Really, really neat book. Oh, and speaking of Charleston, yes, one child drew on it. I don't know where this book went. It's somewhere around here, but it's Samplers and Embroideries from Charleston and the Low Country. So it's a neat little book about um, the samplers in the area. And this one is actually a handwork design sampler. Ginger. Here she goes again. Um, which I thought I, I had at one time. Like I said, selling, buying, selling, buying. Okay. So, where did my sack go? And then fall 2010, the sampler, Ellen O'Brien. I love the red. And that is also a Vicki Jennett of Needlework Press. So, very pretty. Um, Spring 2013, that's a really pretty sampler. Um, but I don't like, I don't like the, I love the reproduction. Let's see if I can find it. I don't really like the finished sampler. But I did like this cute one, Jane Goss. And they did it over one. It's Jane Goss, 1821, all stitched over one. So I think that's so cute. I love the little cherubs. It's adorable. Um, stitched over one using General Arts Weeks Dye Works. So definitely one I think I'd like to stitch one day. And that's spring 2013. All right, so we spring 2010. And they have, there's this one, Priscilla Griffiths, which is really pretty. I love the border. I like the girl in the house. I don't know if I would stitch it though. It's a little, it's a little dull, like the browns and the house was red, <laughs> but I I do like it. And then, I also like this one, 1823 RHV sampler. That's a pretty one. And it looks like at one time I had wanted to stitch it because I was marking in there. And that's also Vicki Jennett of Needlework Press. Okay, four more. Um, volume 21, Winter 2000. I do like this um, Quaker Medallion. I also thought these birds were really pretty. Birds of Winter. So they make cute little ornaments. Um, and this Quaker Medallion sampler is pretty. All right, winter 2010. Oh, this is a sweet little sampler. Mary Hanna. Cute little Adam and Eve. And winter 2004, Ann Hicks. Love this Adam and Eve, so pretty. And I think I searched the web on, there's a 
finished one on Pinterest, and it's really pretty. And Tanya, Scarlet House, was working on it also. But I really like that. Even though there's no red in it, um, it's still a really pretty sampler. And there's this one, which is kind of a neat little Rhode Island. It's not a reproduction, but it's still kind of cute. So, that is my <laughs> snow days, boredom, what I've been working on. Really, I could have been stitching, but it's fun to look through your stuff, too. And like I said, I, I should put those on stash unload and get the DVD. Um, I don't mind stitching from my iPad or, you know, printing out a section if I need to. So, I, um, speaking of samplers, there is a freebie sampler on, I believe, the Facebook Facebook group is Sampler Heart. I'll double check it and put it in the show notes. Um, there is a pretty sampler called Jean Cummings, or Jean Cumming, I'm sorry, and, or Jean's Bunnies, I don't know. But, um, so I was going through, looking at the colors. It calls for a d'Alger or um, DMC. So I had some of the, the Soie d'Alger. And the others I went ahead and converted to needlepoint silk. And then I do have one little Vicky Clayton in there. But the colors are really pretty. And I was thinking of using this vintage maple sugar to stitch it on. Um, but it's a really pretty freebie design and um, so all you have to do is become a member of that group and it's in the files section. So it's very nice of them to share that. I think there's another really pretty freebie sampler in there too. Um, I also went ahead and fitted up this with the 40 count nail. Love that. And that's about it. Oh, I joined the Ann Rayner um, Facebook group, Stitch Along. I really want to get back to Ann. I just have the, look at all those silk threads. They're pretty. I just have the um, bottom border done, or part of the bottom border. I don't even have the whole thing done. And this is 40 Count Vintage Light Exemplar with the uh, Paulette's and conversion and part of Tanya's conversion. So I kind of combined the two of them. So really want to get back to that. Um, I did start something on our snow day. I decided to start Jolly Happy Soul, AKA Frosty. So I am doing it on the 36 count Parisian taupe. I think it's a silk weaver fabric. And there's all the call for threads. That's all I have, STY sty. <laughs> oh, and I did make a change. Throwing stuff around for heritage sampler. I decided not to use the prim gray. I think I'm gonna go with uh, this linen, and I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Hi. I want to say. It might be vintage exemplar? No. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, it looked pretty with the threads and it might be vintage metal roof. Something like that. Because the prim gray, it's pretty, but um, there's deep wrinkles in it and I was worried that they wouldn't come out even with framing. So I might save that for something a little more primitive that I won't care if there's wrinkles. So.
and so um, I was on Instagram and I saw Natasha Stitcherella was working on Mary Bovey. So it kind of inspired me to get Mary back out. There's Mary Bovey by Stacy Nash. And this is done on 32 count murky. And I had actually started it on that prim gray. And when I thought I was gonna use it for heritage, I ripped out what I had started. It was just a tiny bit of the border. And um, so I got back out what I had started before, and I know it's kind of hard to see. That's the problem with this murky. It's very, very primitive. Very, very not something I normally do. Like you can't even really see it. <laughs> and I thought about doing it uh, two over two, but then it just looked too thick. So I'm gonna keep going with it way out of my comfort zone but here's all the gentle art threads and I think it's gonna be really pretty once it's done um, it's just it's different it's very different so we'll see how that goes and I did work on Smith sampler I'm really trying to focus and get this finished um, So I finished up this section and then I got started on this. So I really, really, really want to get this done. And this is the 40 count vintage metal room. Um, that might be metal room. Alright, so, um, oh, I did place a few orders. I. Um, so I will be showing my haul when um, the mail can actually come and go. We have not gotten mail since Tuesday. Um, I sold my some stuff on stash and load, but it's still waiting to go out because the mail hasn't been delivered or picked up. So hopefully if you did place an order for me, it will go out tomorrow, or I mean today and at the very latest Monday. So I'm very sorry. Um, but I think that's it. Uh, hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend and have a great week and maybe I'll see you in a week or two. <laughs> Hopefully no more snow. It's actually, um, supposed to be almost 60 on Monday. So it should definitely be all melted by then. Well, I'll talk to you later.